All right, guys, welcome back. This is part two of our second example on using the slope deflection equation to solve a statically indeterminate beam. All right, picking up right where we left off from the previous video, we, we left off at the very end there with uh, just having our slope deflection equation, and we're going to be using the slightly reduced version because there's no settlement in this problem. So uh, what we can do is we just want to run this four times now, and uh, basically if we come up here, uh, we're, we want to solve. We want to use it to solve for MAB, MBA, MBC, and MCB. So basically, each time for each of those moments, we're just going to be substituting in the first subscript letter with well, for all of the I's and the second subscript letter for all of the J's. So if we want to come down here and we'll get started, we have for MAB. Okay, so we're going to replace all of the I's with A's and J's with B's. We get 2EI over the length uh, AB, that is 10 meters span, times 2 times theta A plus theta B plus the fixed end moment IJ. And the fixed end moment of IJ, so for AB, is minus 62.5. So minus 62.5, that was kilonewton meters. Um, what we can do is we can reduce this a little bit. If we look at this, we see theta A here, and if you remember, theta A is equal to zero, so that is going to reduce that to zero. So we can uh, we can just clean this up a little bit. This is going to be equal to 0 0.2 EI theta B minus 62.5 is equal to MAB. All right, let's do it again for MBA. So this time we're just going to be basically plugging in B's for all of the I's and A's for all of the J's. So we get 2EI over the length uh, of BA. Well, that's the same as the same span as AB, so it's 10. So now we get times 2 theta B plus theta A. And we have plus the fixed end moment BA, which is positive 62.5, so plus 62.5. And uh, what we can do is we can cancel out that theta A that we have in there, because we know that's zero. And uh, then we can reduce this a little bit, so this is going to be 0 0.4 EI theta B plus 62.5. All right, so next up we got MBC. That is equal to 2 EI uh, over the length of BC, which is also 10 meters, so times... Um, 2 theta b plus theta c plus the fixed end moment of bc which is minus actually it's our negative 83.333 all right we're going to cancel out actually no theta b theta c so there's no theta a's on this one so there's uh there's nothing to basically knock down to zero at this point um so we can just distribute it out a little bit so we're going to get 0 0.4 um, EI theta B plus 0 0.2 EI theta C. All right, so that's the expression for MBC. Oh, yeah, and minus 83.333. Cool. And then for MCB, I just want to do this one last time. So we get 2 EI over 10 times 2 theta C plus theta B. Uh, and then plus the fixed end moment, so positive 83.3 plus 83.333. All right, so we can distribute this out again. There's no theta a's in here, so we can't knock any of those to zero. Um, but we can just distribute this in. I'm just going to write. I'm going to write the theta b first, just because we're, we're always having theta b's first. It's going to make our lives a little bit easier later down the road. So 0 0.2 times theta b. We can distribute that one in. 0 0.2 ei theta b plus this stuff 0 0.2 times or yeah 0 0.2 times 2 so that's going to be 0 0.4 ei theta c and then plus this other term in here that was 83.333 kilonewton meters all right so that is the expression for cb and the one thing that we do know about the expression of cb is the moment cb is equal to the moment of c which is equal to zero so we can set all that equal to zero if we want um, and then the other thing that we have is that compatibility equation from the previous video we have mba plus mbc is equal to zero so we have m 
be A plus M B C is equal to zero. So literally we just grab these expressions and set them to zero. And then we can clean it up a little bit. So we're going to have um, 0 0.8 EI theta B plus 0 0.2 EI theta C equals 20.8333. All right, so the other thing that we have is, so we have this expression here um, with two unknowns, theta B and theta C. We have this other expression up here with two unknowns of theta B and theta C. So if we bring this guy down, we line them up like this, um, basically we're just going to say, we're going to bring this over to the other side, so that'll become negative 83.333 all right so when we're looking at this right now right here we have two equations with two unknowns theta b and theta c so you can either solve this by substitution or using a two by two augmented matrix so you can really do either one that you're more comfortable with um, here is the work for the two by two augmented matrix just getting it down into reduced row echelon form and it basically just spits out the values for theta b and theta c. So what we want to do is we want to grab these guys now. We're going to bring it back up here. And we want to plug it in to each of the times where we had a theta b, theta b. We had a theta b's there. We had a theta c there. So if we've got our values here, um, the moments can be calculated. And nice, we get what we were expecting for mcb to be 0. MBA plus MBC would also equal zero if we added those together, so it looks like we've done that right. Uh, so now what we want to do is we want to basically go back up to our free body diagram that we had drawn here uh, in the previous video. I want to grab that. I want to come back all the way down to the bottom. Now we want to start working with this, so let's also grab our numbers that were in here. Um, for the moments that we've just calculated, because now what we can do is we can label those on to the free body diagram. So if we just paste that here so we can see it while we work. Um, taking a look at this, all right. So MAB, we got negative 44.643 kilonewtons. So all that negative means is that it is the opposite way that we had originally assumed it in the clockwise direction. So it's actually going counterclockwise. Now we did have to draw it count on clockwise uh, to make this whole method work, but we're finding out that it's actually going the other way. So we're going to label this on as 44.643 kilonewton meters. And then as soon as we write that, what we want to do is we want to get rid of this because this negative sign is going to start confusing us because we've switched the direction here. So as soon as you write it, get rid of that stuff and never look back. <laughs> um, here this is positive. So we have 90 8.214 kilonewton meters. All right, that was so it's going the right direction. We nuke that guy. All right, here MBC is negative, so we got to switch the direction here on the free body diagram to what we originally assumed it to be. So we switch it, it's going counterclockwise now, and uh, we just have this magnitude of 98. 0.214. Now that, that also checks out too with our free body diagram, right? So for this point here, um, where, where we looked at them up there and one was positive, one was negative, that was good. Here they're they're equal and opposite going in different directions. Um, and so that, that still makes sense when we actually look at this point um, basically on the, the free body diagram of the structure. Okay, but as soon as we write it down, we do want to get rid of that. And then um, and then MBC here is going to be equal to zero kilonewton meters. Cool. So we got that. Um, now the only thing that is left unknown on our on our free body diagrams here is the shear forces at the end. And we can really easily calculate these one span at a time doing the sum of moments and then the sum of uh, vertical forces. So for the first one here, if we do the sum of moments about A, we're going to get that BB1 is negative 30.3571 kilonewtons. So it's actually going to be pointing up in the opposite direction that I drew it on here, but I did draw these on with the positive sign convention uh, for uh, for like shear force diagrams and bending moment diagrams or these internal forces. 
Um, so where we get this negative value here of negative 30, it's actually going up. So if it's actually going up, it would be opposite the positive sign convention. So really the internal shear here is defined as negative 30 kilonewtons, and that's what it is going to be on the shear force diagram uh, at that point. So drawing, drawing these shears on in the positive sense is kind of helpful for us in that way. Um, now, when we just do the sum of forces in the y direction, we have 50 going down, we have 30.3571 going up. So we're going to find that VA is just going to be, uh, this is 19.6429. Now we can do exactly the same thing for the second span here. We'll take the sum of moments about point B. Then we're going to find that VC is negative 40.1786 kilonewtons. And then when we take the sum of forces in the y direction, we have 100 going down from the distributed load. We're going to have 48.1786 going up. And so that's going to give us VB2. Um, yeah, this is going to be equal to positive 59.8214 kilonewtons. All right, guys. So now we have the end internal shear and moment for each of these spans. And uh, now we have enough information to draw the shear force diagram, bending moment diagram, and uh, also solve for the reactions. And so I'm going to cut it off here for this video, and then we'll do that stuff in the next video. So I will see you guys there, and we will wrap up the problem.